Hi there! Um, this is uh, a tutorial video I've been meaning to make for a while and I've been slowly working on as I apply this technique to every piece of armor in my custom Mandalorian build over the last few months. Uh, people have been requesting this for a while but I really needed to do it a lot to really understand it. I mean, my first few pieces it didn't really work exactly as I wanted and it took a while to really understand the technique. And when it doesn't work, why doesn't it work? Um, so I finally have that down. I really understand and love this technique a lot more. It's a, an alcohol ink speckling kind of texture that you can add and layer up to any other weathering you've already done. Um, an example would be on this helmet on the temple. Um, see that kind of speckling texture right there? Um, and I have it in a few other places, just kind of all over. It's uh, this really great texture that is unlike anything you can ever make with a brush. So I applied that to a lot of the armor. Um, if you haven't seen any of my tutorial videos on weathering before, I would highly recommend just starting with video number one, um, which is an intro to weathering and sort of all about the, the weathering theory, why you put weathering where, and like having intention when you do it rather than just making it dirty in a random or less than random way. Um, you know, really thinking about why something gets dirty how it does. And that applies to any technique you use um, across every possible form of weathering, including this one. So it's a great place to start. The rest of my weathering videos are all going to be linked in the description below. So you can watch those two as well. Or you can just jump right to this technique if you're curious to try it. So um, let's get started. So this alcohol ink speckle weathering. Um, I don't know if it has a better name. That's what I've been calling it. Um, what it is, is sort of this um, technique of getting a texture of kind of little rings and speckly dots. Um, and it's really faint. So it's something that you really only notice when you're up close to a prop. And it just adds a layer of something to it. Um, it's usually very subtle. Like I've seen it done a little heavier. The first few times I tried it, it was way overpowering and I kept having to blot it out. Um, the great thing about it is that it's forgivable and you can keep trying and trying, but when you, when you get it right, it just adds like just this great extra layer of texture to things that you wouldn't get any other way. And I've been really loving the subtlety of it as a, as a, um, a kind of texture. You can get these bigger dots and littler dots and you can really experiment with like what it does in different situations and on different um, different types of props and different you know darknesses of paint. Um, so it, it's a it's a subtle layer up that you can add to anything. I first saw this texture um, done by a prop maker on Jackson Rupert's site. He's done all these Bo-Katan helmets, and they had this really great texturing on the white of the temple. That's why I did it on this helmet. Um, and he, he's done 82 Bo-Katan helmets and they all had some version of this. And I, he also does it on his short troopers and other ones. And I was just like, what is that texture? I got to figure out. And I finally, um, learned from him that it's this Copic ink technique. Um, and then when I was doing it, I tried to think like, what is this replicating? Why does this appeal to me so much? Like this little speckly texture, it's a great texture, but why does it feel like good weathering to me? And I started, um, about three weeks ago, just any time I saw that texture out in the world or around my house, I would just take a photo with my phone and you're going to see them here. Um, I saw it show up everywhere from as simple as like on cars where, where the dust is there and raindrops had hit it and made little rings, um, to in my kitchen, to construction equipment, on concrete, on leather, on wood, on glass, on bare metal surfaces, on painted metal surfaces. I saw it everywhere and it doesn't always happen from the same thing. It's very often from water we see out in our world, um, but it also can be oil spatter, like in the case of kitchen things and, and around a gas station. Um, it can be from um, any kind of solvent that hits something that can be dissolved by that in a fine drip or water form. Um, it just really gives that look and it, it will create a ring um, and it can be a tiny ring or a big ring. but. Um, you will see in, in these pictures that it just, it's everywhere. I just see it everywhere. And I think that's why it's so compelling is because it's everywhere and it happens lots of different ways. Um, it really is something that we associate with something that's dirty or grimy or weathered. Um, much like having just stuff in the cracks in the corners, like it, it 
it, it happens everywhere we look and so our brain just associates that with dirt um so it associates this speckly pattern with with grime and so i just think it's a great um weathering technique um, because you can add it to other ones you can get a look that you can't possibly get with only one technique and that's how the world is things get weathered by multiple things they get chipped they get grime they get soot they get rained on um, they get dusty they get muddy and all those things add to the look of like a well-worn piece of something and um, and adding multiple techniques of weathering really can enhance any piece because it will look more realistic because our world is not weathered in one way it's weathered in countless ways so the basic idea of this technique that i'm going to be showing you is um that i'm going to take some alcohol based inks in this case i'm using these copic inks in different colors um, i'm going to dilute it a little bit put it inside an airbrush and spray it very evenly and finely all over the surface of a prop um, these inks are alcohol based and, and these are the refills these come in pens they're the most common thing you'll find um, but you need the refill because it's like a way to refill the pen and you can drip um, ink out of these bottles um, you can use any alcohol based inks for using this alcohol method and then you're going to take a spray bottle um, like a water spray bottle a simple thing you can get in any drugstore and mist a fine mist of ink and let it slowly drift onto that surface um, which will give it that great compelling speckly texture you don't want to be like pointing at it and spraying you want it to be like that sort of just a drift like on the wind of mist um, that will land on that technique and that creates everywhere those microscopic little droplets of water hit um, they will form um, a little momentary bubble of liquid which is rubbing alcohol which will force the ink out to the edges of that bubble of liquid and then it will dry very quickly leaving just that ring of pigment and so even though you can't see it the first time you spray it especially if you're doing very faintly on like white armor um, once you spray it you will see those rings show up because it's taking the surface area of ink and condensing it into this fine ring and so it suddenly becomes darker um, and denser in pigment so it shows up everywhere um, and it dries in moments like it's it dries in eight seconds or so so you're able to see what you've done right away you're able to um it's very forgiving so you can blot it right back out with rubbing alcohol so often i'll just have a rag i'll squirt my rag with some fresh alcohol and i'll blot it clean um, that will still leave a residue on there so you can mist it again and see what it looks like again because it's drying in 10 seconds at the most so it's it's a rapid rapid um method that will really keep drying and you can reapply it and do it lots of different ways or completely remove it if you hate it that's fine <laughs> you can do that that's what's great about this even weeks later um you can you can take a rag and and remove something you've done and you know it's it's until you seal it in with a clear coat it's something that you can you can push and pull with so it's a really neat um simple technique that will work really well so alcohol inks are are one of the simplest ones um, and they're very accessible like it's you can just you can learn this technique and use it fairly quickly um, and the the although i can't find these at many stores there's one art store i've been able to find these refills i was able to order them online and just pick some colors there's hundreds of colors so that's another reason that these copic inks are a favorite because some people use them to like airbrush bluing and other things on on metallics to make them look like they have a temper line um, that comes in lots of different colors i tend to use browns and grays and things to get that look but um you know i'll, I'll link which specific colors i'm using uh in the description below but you can use kind of anything and try different things especially on different props where color is important to make sense for a certain kind of look um, it can also be done with anything that's a solvent for something else so you could use water-based inks. I think the reason why they aren't used is because the water takes so long to dry that there's a chance that those drops will combine and run down a curved surface, whereas the alcohol dries so quickly it doesn't have a chance to really mess up or get bumped and, and ruin anything. Um, but, you know, Jackson Rupert even says that he uses thin oil paint sometimes and he speckles it with naphtha, which is a solvent for oil paint. So um, it does work with other things. Um, you see it all over the world done with water especially like you know on a car roof and that sort of thing but um anything you can think of that you could dissolve with something that you could spray out of a spray bottle you could try it and i'm sure it would work or have some degree of success or you could remove it and and 
message me and say that didn't work here's another one that doesn't work that's fine you know let's let's figure it out but copic inks are by far the easiest and tried and true method for this technique um the other thing uh, a, a note is that it's you know some people go with the higher and higher strong alcohol that was my impulse too because i have some 99 percent i use for resin printing in a spray bottle um, but jackson rupert says that that often will leave a white chalky residue so he warned me against using that use 70 to 80 percent you can buy 70 and i just buy it just for this and have this in the bottle it's at every drugstore 99 is a little harder to find anyway but um that chalky residue will go away when you clear coat it but you know, meanwhile, it's hard to tell what you've done and it's distracting. So it's way better to use these kind of lower, lower levels of alcohol. Um, and then once you clear coat it, you, you lock in that effect. So you can, you can, um, have fun with it and, and really, really get your, your look down. But you, if you hate it, you can always remove it. So that's not always true with every kind of weathering. In these videos, I'll be using these three colors. Um, in all the different things I did in this armor to keep it consistent. Um, I'll link the exact names of these colors in the videos, but you don't have to use the exact thing. Um, I use a gray because black was going to be too strong and I needed to dilute. I ended up diluting it even more, but a, some kind of middle gray, some kind of, you know, cocoa-y brown, and some kind of khaki color for a little bit warmth when you want to get a little more dirt look in some spots. Um, the proportions are basically mostly this, so something like eight drops of this, three drops or four drops of this brown, and then like one or two drops of this khaki color. That was sort of the blend I ended up using on everything once I had experimented a bit um, because I wanted it to be not just gray. I wanted some warmth with some dirtiness, but not like too rusty, bright orange. So a little mix of all of it. I first started using it full strength. Now there's, there's definitely a time and a place for it, especially on darker, like on this darker um, red, like the faint look really showed up well on the regular armor, um, but it didn't show up much on this darker red. So to get that look to happen, I really needed to, um, to leave it a little bit more full strength. But really, um, these little uh, pens, uh, refills, don't hold a ton of ink. They hold a bit. Um, I haven't run out yet, but I've gotten some extra ones just in case because I'm getting really low on this gray. Um, but if you use it full strength, like let's say you do eight drops of gray, um, you know, four drops and two drops, you need to do that about four times to fill your cup halfway. And that's a lot of this ink. I found that I was spraying it on. I would mist it and it would just look way too dark. And then um, like, because, you know, it looks faint when you're doing it and you, you want to like see it happen. But as soon as that alcohol hits, it moves all those rings to the side and then the rings become very dense and dark and it looks really deeply speckled. And I found that I would spray a rag, blot it out. I do it again. Oh, it's still too dark. Spray a rag, blot it out. And by the time I got it to like a faint residue that was left from all that blotting, and then I would do a mist, I would get this really beautiful, subtle speckling that I wanted. Now I was basically wasting ink putting it onto that rag. So to to make this better, I just um, I spray a little bit of this alcohol into the, the airbrush pot, which pre-dilutes it. So I'm using less ink. It can go for a lot longer on those same initial 12 drops of ink. Um, I can get a lot of coverage um, and it's a lot more control and I'm not putting a bunch of this ink into the rag. It really, it really dialed in like how, how dense I wanted it. On dark colors, go denser. On light colors, go fainter. Have fun with it. There are a few places this technique just doesn't seem to work very well. Um, so in places where there's too much texture already, um, like these, I do this kind of paint um, ball technique to get texture in the paint. Um, this technique just almost didn't work at all in anywhere that had texture. It really needed smooth paint. Um, again, on here, I kept trying and trying to get it to work. Um, but if you look in the in the shine, there's like a, a lot of actual texture here and it, it really needs somewhere flat to let the droplets land to create a perfect circle. Um, and if they're landing on a little miniature canyon, like they don't really form the right shapes. And so it just kind of followed the texture and it added like another layer of almost like wash weathering. It didn't really create these speckles at all. Um, somewhere else it didn't seem to work well is um, like this case, not only does this case have a faint plastic texture to it, you know, like a little 
fine pebbly texture, uh, which it didn't work on. But also anything like this that was unpainted didn't appear to work very well, even on the smoother, shinier high points. Um, it just doesn't want to stick to just straight plastic as well. It just didn't work like I expected it would. It really works best on painted surfaces. Um, it will work on very fine props, um, you know, like in, in fine little spots, but it's kind of hard to find the spots where you can actually get it to show. So um, it works best on big areas um, that are flat and smooth and painted. That's what I found. Another thing that can go wrong is too much alcohol. This is something you learn right away when you're doing it. You do one mist, it gives you some speckles. You're like, oh, I think I need a little more. A little more, a few more speckles. Looking beautiful. Then you do it a third time, and now all those rings kind of meet because there's too much liquid on the surface, and it starts breaking up all those rings and becomes this kind of muddy, patchy pattern, and you lose all those speckles, and you just have to wipe it off and try again. This happened a lot, especially when I was first learning it. I'll show you some examples of that, but really, like, there's a fine balance between not enough and too much, and you have to hit this, this one spot before you overdo it. So too much alcohol will just break it up. Um, the other thing that can ruin it while you're doing it is um, when you're, you've already done an area and it looks great, and then you're doing the next area, anywhere that that alcohol lands will affect that one before. So you may have the perfect amount of speckles on one side, you go to spray the other side, and now more alcohol could land on those speckles that you'd already done, and, and now they're going to become muddy and, and over, over textured. So, um, you really have to be careful when you're doing a large object um, because it's hard to miss the whole thing at once. So you'll kind of want to do sections and leave some sections without any because anything that's within the, the range of your spray could be affected, including like say this is done, I'm doing it on my table, now I'm doing this piece and I spray and some could land over on that other prop. So I often had to finish a piece and then put it somewhere else in the shop so that it wouldn't be touched by that mist of alcohol because that mist, is pretty large like it affects an area about this big um, which is half of my workbench would be covered in some kind of mist so you always have to move the pieces out of there because until they are clear coated they can be affected all right now uh, I'm going to show you just some of the pieces being made as I did them um, so you can see this in action so let's get to it okay so when I use these Copic inks um, Initially, they seem fairly light and faint, and so I was using them full strength, um, and I found it was best to dilute them. And the reason why is because, here, let me, uh, I put a few drops of, you know, maybe like six drops of gray and a couple of brown and a couple of this khaki color. And I'll show you what it looks like on white. I mean, it's like a very faint brown. It's almost hard to see. And it looks like it's not much at all. Um, and so if I, I spray it on the surface, um, you know, when you when you look at it, you don't even you don't even see it. But what happens when you spray the alcohol, when you mist it on there, is everywhere it hits, it makes a droplet. And that pushes the ink to the edge of the droplets and all these droplets end up next to each other and so that very faint ink that you can't even see um will suddenly concentrate into those lines and become fairly dark so i ended up diluting it but i thought i would do it straight up so you could see what that looked like so here we go So I ended up spraying a little too much. This happens a lot, but it's okay because I'm going to wipe this off. But you can see it actually like ended up pretty dark. So what I found was, is that I kept doing this thinking like, ah, that's, that's too much. You can see it's kind of lovely texture up there. Um, and then I would spray my rag with some rubbing alcohol, 70% isopropyl. And I would just dab it back and wipe it off. You know, you can, you can wipe it all out with alcohol and get most of it. And then I would, you know, there's still a residue of alcohol, uh, I mean, of ink on there. So if I do it again, I'm going to wait for it to dry for a minute. 
if I do it again, there's still some of that ink there. Um, and that's starting to get the amount that I wanted, which was a very faint texture. So rather than go through that twice and rub it out twice, um, I just figured it was better to start with more dilute um, ink. So, those are looking nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take my ink, drip it into my airbrush. I'm going to do about six drops of brown, dark brown. Maybe ten or twelve drops. Of black or gray. I use gray because it's even more dilute already than black would be. And maybe one or two of these khaki to keep it warm. And then I take my spray bottle and I just spray right into the, you know, a few sprays in there. So you can see it's fairly full now. Um, it also will make that ink go a lot further. Um, I like to do that thing where I, I mix by putting my finger in front of the airbrush nozzle and it kind of bubbles up, but if you can see it kind of sprays little droplets around and I got a couple on the piece and it stained it in a way that I can't wash off that little brown dot, which is fine, but good to know I think I shouldn't do that little thing close to the prop. Anyway, now I have my dilute spray. So again, I'm going to mist it. I dabbed most of it off. There's still some in the cracks, um, but I'm going to give it that mist. Now let me show you the comparison of color. I just sprayed it on this white paper. You can't see it, but it's there. Um, but it's just a much, it's about, looks like 30% or so of the darkness that the original full strength was. So here goes. It's really hard to see what you're doing, so you just have to trust that it's getting on everything. Because it's an airbrush too, you can you can go heavier in spots where you're going to want more grime. So I went a little heavier at the bottom because this is closer to the ground. I thought it might just get a little more dirty, but you know we can't really see what's going on in that spot that I just indicated. So let's give it a little mist and see what happens. There's my spots appearing. It's much fainter. It's still this is going to be too strong, so I'm going to dab some of that out. Um, got some larger droplets here and there, so I might dab this off and try again, but let me give it one more spritz. See what it comes up with. So there, it's sort of speckled everywhere, which is not exactly the look I'm getting for, but I'd love to have some of that in the cracks. So the great thing about this is you just take a rag and get it wet with some alcohol. And you can dab it off anywhere that it's too strong and anywhere you touch it just goes away like see all these ring spots here let's get rid of those see it just goes back to mostly white it's leaving a residue so the next time i spray there will still be some there so you always have to be aware that you're always leaving something behind um, but it's very easy to control and to pull back and reapply if you don't like any marks that you make. And I appreciate this texture the most when it's just over in the little cracks, just like a lot of weathering, you know. I don't want it really strong on these high points at all. So I can dab them off. I, I tend not to smear because it, it does kind of paint a smear mark. So now you can see on this side, I haven't wiped it off. On this side I have. And 
it's showing up in these cracks next to that central ridge and on the edges, but not as much in the middle. Um, and you can just keep dabbing and, and adjusting as you go to get it exactly how you want. There's some nice stuff up at the top. So I'm just going to leave that up there. That looks great. So, you know, you can, you can get it back to pretty much your base weathering if you want um, at any point. Just be careful with your spray bottle because anywhere it sprays will reactivate that texture. With this stuff, I find it, it's just, it's such a, a pronounced texture that um, the more I've done it, I, I like it best when it's faint. That's why I dilute it. And also just not everywhere. You know, you don't want to have the texture in every single spot on your piece. You just want a few indications of it to break up the ordinary weathering to give it something a little more interesting in a few spots. So there's what I'm ending up with. It's mostly missing, but you can see some faint spots and a few more at the top. I thought it looked better with a, a bit more up in that crevice, but almost none on this ridge. Just in the spots that, that will really kind of show a little extra texture. Right along that ridge on that side, I think that looks nice. Um, I think it's a little strong up here still. Like if you look, it looks like a lot going on. Kind of a draft texture up there. I'm going to give it a little less. And again, dabbing, not smearing, because the, it will sort of paint the, the ink. Okay, so there, I dabbed it out a bit. So now it's just in those cracks, not in the main body. A little less obvious texture. And that looks nice. So this looked done, um, but I can see there's still some residue down here. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to see what happens when I hit that with the mist. Now... You have to be careful to try and target the mist just to this area because I don't want it to affect these areas I really like up at the top. So I'm going to try and mist in the air and then just put this tip into that mist. So here we go. And you can see it sort of activated some of that was there. It's really faint, which is fine. Give it another one. It's really pretty subtle what was left, but you can see it's creating those little dots all over the place. Yeah, that looks a little better. I'm going to hit this lower area just a little bit more with my dilute ink. Because I like the idea of things getting dirtier as it gets lower on the ground. And this is a thigh plate, so there we go. I'll just try and target that area with the mist. And here's that result. You can see it definitely was there, even though you could barely see it in the initial. I think and this one needs a little more mist. Here we go. Yeah, that's a nice look. Just needed something more down there. Felt like I'd wiped out too much, but I just reapplied and it's there. Now I'm gonna dab out just a bit of the middle. Uh, 
I always love weathering techniques that you can kind of back up from and reapply and back up and reapply. Yeah, that's getting a nicer look. So now I've got a bit more of that significant ring texture going on down there. You can see where I wiped rather than completely dabbed. Those are still nice marks, but you can always dab them back to get rid of those lines or leave them if you like the wipe look. So now I'm getting, I got some really nice ones right on that edge. That's great. So it's a subtle texture thing that really can add some, you know, small interesting spots. Um, pure overall haze, but from back here you don't see anything. It's just something that really catches the eye up close. So this piece is done. I'm going to move on to the shoulder next. I am not going to keep this piece nearby because it could likely, likely get some alcohol mist when I'm doing some of those small bits. And if any of that mist hits this, until I seal it, it's still active and it can reactivate it. Ten days from now, if this piece is on my bench and I'm doing another piece, it could reactivate it if I haven't sealed it yet. So you just take that piece and you move it to somewhere else so it won't get affected by the mist. So this is sprayed. Again, it's really hard to see. If you didn't know it was there, it'd be hard to even notice. Um, it, it, the light may be a little stronger where I am. Um, I can see it fairly heavy right in that little area, but again, heavy is relative. It's very faint. I just went a little bit stronger on these two lower corners because I thought that would look nice. Um, a little bit less in the very center and um, one little pass right around this gutter on this shoulder piece just to see what that did. So, we'll find out. Here we go. There's that side that I went heavier. You can see it appear as soon as the alcohol hits it. So it's tricky because I hit this area, then I hit this area, and then I hit the top, but some of it Hit that bottom area again which is fine we'll fix it so the top has only had really one mist but if it's too close to the other areas you're going to be double misting them which can get this kind of muddier look where you don't get those distinct rings that's fine because i can always dab it back out and do it again um, or i can dab it back out and yeah just mist it or i can i can completely re-airbrush it and do that again Let's let that dry and then I'll hit it again. This area is a little too strong in texture. I mean, it's nice. It does look, but I think I got enough texture going on. I don't need that much help up there. You can also see in my kind of gutter, it's really textured there. So I'm going to have to dab into that to try and reduce some of that brown in there. Because it already had a lot of color. I don't need a lot more color down there. Same with this gutter. Just got a lot going on in that groove. Which is just a bit much for what it is. So. And just remove some of that 
ink so that when I remist it, there's it's fainter. Okay, I've got some you know little spots of beautiful texture here and there. You know that looks great, but these areas have been mostly wiped free, so I'm going to try and give them a new mist. Not going too strong. Uh, really picked up a lot of that, so it looked totally wiped free, but there was still that residue. Looks really nice. I'm going to dab some of that away, but especially in the middle, in the high point, where it would just get cleaned off a little better. couple of big rings and I, I wiped two of them out but I kind of like that one right there that does look nice so I'm just gonna, gonna leave that dab up to it so we get kind of like a little bit of a This is a left shoulder, so this will be the front. So I'm trying to just see what I can, what I want to see from the front view of the costume. Like think about it that way. Yeah, that's nice. This back corner is lovely. Yeah, looking good. So I sprayed a little more. I got a nice texture up here. Um, I was thinking of hitting this area again, but remember I had that one big ring I liked. So if I do that, it's probably going to disappear. So let's see what happens. So that, that ring became several rings. It kind of broke it up. So you always have to be cognizant of what you want to keep and what you're willing to, to get rid of to try something new. So again, I spray, I dripped about 10 drips of this light gray, four drips of brown, two drips of this khaki color, spritzed in some rubbing alcohol to dilute it to about a third, maybe more. Mix it. You can see it spatters the area, so don't do that next to your piece. Time to hit this final one. Now this piece has both um, white and this sort of deep rust color. So you're gonna have to go heavier on a darker color. So I've been doing fairly di dilute on white, um, but the red is gonna need a few coats or, or a bit longer time with the airbrush for it to even show up if you really want it to appear on that. Again, it's really hard to see, so you just have to trust that it's there and it will be revealed as you spray the alcohol. Going a little heavier on these lower corners, and especially on this part I already weathered fairly dark, but I think that kind of underside of the back, the back plate, I think that'll catch some more grime. I think I need a bit. 
bit more on this brown. You can see it's like fairly faint. I mean, the, if I do just one spritz of it, that's the line it makes. I mean, you can't even see it. It's just like the faintest thing. So you have to build it up heavier and heavier if you want it to show. Like, like that. All right, let's find out what we did. Definitely went heavier in that area. Look at that. That's too much. Some big drops. That wasn't ideal. When I was spritzing, I didn't quite do it evenly. And it's not really showing much up in this deep red area, so I'm going to have to go in with some more full strength for that part. But this is nice. wipe most of this out of here because it was just you know I couldn't really see it and it was going on fairly heavy it turns out so got rid of that big ring and because I know I'm going to hit this again it's okay to leave it a little blotchy because the alcohol will sort of redistribute that ink when I come back and hit it it's amazing the rag will feel fairly wet but stop working because the alcohol's already kind of left it and just left the water behind which doesn't do anything to the alcohol so it's deceptively damp but ineffective so you you only have about a minute of dabbing before you have to re mist your rag with alcohol Okay, now I've removed most of what was here, not removed, but um, kind of dabbed out a lot of that texture again. So it's ready to hit again with the mist, but I want to give a bit more um, up here. So I'm going to do some almost full strength ink um, on the red before I hit it with mist because with a piece this large, if I'm going to miss this area, it's going to miss this area. So I, I think I want to have it all prepped and ready before I do that. So, let's do about 10 drops, it looks like 11 drops of this gray. I'm going to do five drops of the brown, and I think because this area wouldn't show any of this kind of warmth, no point in adding such a faint kind of warm color here. So let me just use it um, with just one squirt. And you can see that that many drips is like almost no ink. So I don't have a lot to deal with um, like I do when it's fairly dilute. So I'm just gonna have to go really quickly and hit this spot before it runs out. to do it and I'll just leave this in case I need to do more. Um, let's give it a mist. Let's see what we get. So I, I, I over misted this part. You can see it's kind of that grainy look, which is fine. I'll, I'll hit this again. Um, my red area, it's still barely showing up. I mean, you can see it in the shine, but once it dries, it, it's a fairly small texture. Um, so I think I need to dab a bit of this off and give myself some more ink up in that area. You 
it's just too it's just too much coverage i mean it's just kind of dingy rather than uh you know areas of beautiful texture so i think i'm going to get most of it off this top because i think that part would rub rub off anyway that top part of the back and then dab some of the worst areas in here All right, definitely need some more color up here. So I'm gonna give it another hit of the 100% or you know 70%. I only gave it a little bit of alcohol. I need this to dry before I spray it. I don't wanna spray alcohol on a wet surface. So it went pretty heavy in these spots. I'm curious to see what it actually did. Because I know I'm going to get more on here, let me wipe a bit of this off over here. Just so that I don't have too much heavy stuff up at the, this top edge. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. So what I was able to get now that I went fairly heavy is this speckling texture in the dark red, which just wasn't showing up at my one third strength. I remember this happened on my chest plate too, but now oh, it just has such glorious speckling going on in there. Now let me get the rest of the piece. So I've got pretty good speckling everywhere. Um, but again, I need to wipe out some of this white. It's just getting too much on the top here. You can see it just, it's got a lot going on, which is fine in some areas, but I didn't really want it on this top area as much. So I'm gonna really try and see what I can do to get rid of some of that. You can see on the very edge where I was hitting it darker, um, it got a bit more ink you know, kind of overspray from, from that area, especially right along that edge. So I'm gonna try and wipe that out to keep that clean line and not make it look so dirty. But the good thing about this stuff is very easy to control like that. Like I can just wipe just that edge and keep my nice clean division of the colors. Look at that, just cleans right up. Until you seal it, you have all the time you need. You can come back in three days and realize you hate it and go right back to it. Wipe it off, start over again. It always leaves a little residue on the piece, but that adds to it, getting those tiny speckles here and there. I'm finding, I did a lot of this, um, tape ball texture on the piece and the speckles really work best where it was smoother um I you know I wanted to add texture to texture but it has a lot of trouble creating those nice rings on what is I guess in a small level a sort of mountain range of paint so it's just not wanting to make really nice circles and that makes sense so I think it's sort of an either or you either need physical texture or this spray texture but the two together don't really work there's some of that up in this corner and it doesn't really work as well in those spots it works some but it's good to note that 
if you have actual paint texture, it's going to limit the effectiveness of this technique. In this area, it's pretty good, but it's also looking a little blotchy and muddy. And I kind of want some of that fine texture there. So even though I have most of this just dialed into exactly where I want, um, which is, it's risky, but I'm going to try and give it one more spritz to get some finer stuff where I kind of wiped and blotched it. Um, you know, I kind of want like this smaller texture going on in there. So I'm going to do it. If it doesn't work, we can always go again. Yeah, I got it better, but I think I'm going to blot it out and try again. I think that <clears throat> blottiness is not from my ink, but from my acrylic wash. So I think I was trying to affect that, which is not really possible. So let me give it a little more color. Because I think I, in essence, have wiped out almost all of the possible color in there. So that haze was not from the ink smearing, but from my acrylic wash. So one more try. Yeah, there it all came back. So I'm getting a bunch of tiny rings now all over the place. So I just have to accept that it's going to be blotchy because of my initial weathering and keep those little texture dots where they came. Looks good. So this technique is really forgiving, and you could even go back um, and wipe stuff off later. And I just realized I had an experiment for that. So I did the top of this once I'd figured out a little bit more of the technique to get some subtle speckling all throughout. But I just remembered on the bottom was the first place I tried this technique just to see if it would work. I did it full strength. You can see it was like really strong, and I was like, whoa, okay, looks like I got something to learn. Um, unlike all these other pieces, um, I never went back and clear-coated this. So... Theoretically, um, this alcohol ink could be reactivated. So let me see what happens when I when I missed it um, after it's been already done. So it's not reactivating it instantly. But let's see if I can take an alcohol rag and wipe it off. Um, so that's good that it didn't, it, it dried enough that it, w it wasn't instantly soluble, but yeah, look, it just wipes right off. So it did um, leave some residue there, like it's sort of stained a little bit. No, I can wipe that mostly off too, actually there, it's all gone. So it is removable, um, this whole area was just densely inked, so um, yeah, that's great news that it doesn't instantly re-speckle um, when something hits it, um, but it can be removed if you eventually decide you don't want it anymore and you haven't clear coated it um, like I have on all my other ones because I love how they look. Yeah, I was able to get pretty much all that off and all this left are these horrible scratches. <laughs> it's the bottom. Nobody really cares. The, the top the top looks really nice and that was the thing I was really trying to get. I mean, look at all these subtle speckles but yeah it can be removed five weeks later so that's it that's this uh, copic ink alcohol weathering technique um, getting those speckles on this whole set of armor was just so fun to do and and i really learned a lot and and i just love the look especially because it's unified across the, the whole suit i'm probably going to go and do this technique on a few other things props that are already finished because it may add just the right thing that i've been looking for and i didn't know i could do back then um, if you do this and, and 
do it on a prop, um, please tag me so I can see what it looks like. Especially on other colors. I really only ha did it on three different colors on this whole set of armor. Um, so I'd love to see what it looks like in different ways and different applications. If you discover something along the way that I didn't cover in this video, please let me know or comment on this video. Message me on Instagram. I would love to see what you learn because, you know, we all add to this collective knowledge and it, it's great to see what, what we can do with it. Um, so uh, I guess enjoy it and happy crafting.